It says, it is righteous us when we guard and do all this command before Yahweh or Elohim, as he commanded us. So that's what declares you righteous. People say, oh no, you can't be declared righteous without the shed blood and everything. Well, there's levels to this. There's your righteousness and there's his righteousness. And there's a point where your righteousness won't be good enough and his righteousness needs to be applied. But there is your righteousness. That is a thing, we just read it. It says, it is righteousness for us when we guard to do all this command. So there is your righteousness. Now I know I've painted this picture many times, I'll do it very quickly, but in the picture I've painted, you're walking to the kingdom, metaphorically, right? You're walking to the kingdom and you get to a door, again, this is a metaphor, and the door into the kingdom is locked. But what you need to understand is, it was your righteousness, the walk, that got you to the door. That's where your righteousness benefits you. Without it, you never get to the door. You're just living life off the side of the road somewhere, right? You know, turn left, don't turn right, and it's all kinds of crazy stuff out there. But your righteousness of walking the straight path gets you to the door. It's that, problem is the door is locked because your righteousness is still filthy rags. Your righteousness is still not good enough because you have stains all over you. Sure, you repented. Sure, you were washed clean, so to speak but you're washed clean with the blood that's Yeshua now coming into play. Anyone not doing righteousness is not of Elohim. What did Deuteronomy tell, uh, told, what did Deuteronomy tell us is the definition of righteousness for us. What is the doing? The Torah commands. So I apologize to everybody in mainstream Christianity that all wants to get mad at me, but I'm sorry, this verse really messes you up. Because it says that if you're not doing righteousness because your system told you it was all nailed to the cross and done away with, you are not of Elohim. John said that, not Moses, not somebody to the left of Matthew. John is telling you that. That's a hard one right there. I'm not picking on you guys. You've been lied to. At some point you're going to get tired of being lied to and start listening to the truth and not the 2,000 years of manufactured corporate lies from the system called the church. People trying to understand, well, what's it gonna be like when he comes back and we're changed? What are we gonna be changed into? What's it all about? And I've often used the analogy of like an amoeba trying to understand a human being, right? A single cell amoeba versus a how many billion cells human being? How can they possibly relate as a one-celled amoeba to what we are? But what if I took that amoeba and made it into a human being? Now we'd understand. And that's part of how we're gonna be changed. We're gonna be changed into him. And then we will see him as he is. But I, I promise you, the verse doesn't say it directly. It says, but we, but we know that when he's revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We will, but things have, you have to be like him. He says, and everyone having that expectation in him cleanses himself and he is clean. What are you cleansing yourself of? The old you. The old you is dirty, smelly, rotten, whatever, right? You need to cleanse and wash that old you off of you. Some of you I can walk around going, you smell a little like the old you. So you should be able to smell that stink and say, no, that's got to be buried and gotten rid of. I need to be smell that smell, clean smell. Okay? So he says, you cleanse yourself. Notice it says he cleanses himself. He doesn't say that the Father does it or Elohim does it or Yeshua does it or some other thing. Everyone having that expectation, that person cleanses himself and he is clean. Little children, let no one lead you astray. We're back in 1 John 3. Well, why would he need to say that unless it was possible and likely that there would be those trying to lead you astray? Or maybe not doing it on purpose, but because they happen to be wrong and you listen to them, you get led astray. Because I'm going to make this statement very publicly. It is my opinion 
and I'm hoping that this is actually the truth, it is my opinion that very few of the people with microphones are leading people astray on purpose, okay? It is my opinion that very, very few, what they're doing is just regurgitating what they were taught by others who were regurgitating what they were taught, where it says our fathers have inherited lies and we've swallowed strong delusion, and they truly believe what they're teaching you is correct, okay? But their belief in it doesn't make it correct. Do you know anybody that can't sin? We all sin, it's other verses that actually say we all fall short. We all sin and fall short, it says. So what is John talking about? He's not contradicting that here, he's saying look, he says, if you've been born of Elohim, you do not sin. He says, because his seed stays in him and he is powerless to sin because he has been born of Elohim. But yet, we're, we're in this sort of weird, I'm trying to think of, um, I don't know, it's picture in a movie, right, where somebody's kind of, changing between two different sort of appearances and like the screen goes, you know, and they try to look one way, then they look another way, like they keep changing back and forth. That's kind of what you are. Like you're of Elohim and then you're of the devil for a few seconds and you're of Elohim and then you're, because you're not just one thing one time and you did it and that's it. It's a life journey of fighting that fight, which is why you need the armor. Yes, it's great as a married man that I don't sleep with another woman. It's also better that I don't desire to do it, okay? This is what he's trying to get at. The people I want in my kingdom, he's basically saying is, not just the ones who mechanically did what they had to do because they were afraid or this or that or whatever, whatever the motivation was, but because it really was where their heart is because if my heart is right, then I'm not gonna want to do that and then I'm not gonna then go do it. The fact that I didn't do it is not enough. Wanting to do it eventually will lead to doing it. So even though I might have been successful up to this point with the discipline not to do it, at some point that will fail. And when we're talking about forever, he's not gonna give you a forever suit if your heart and your head's not right, even though your mechanics have been pretty good. It's still always connected back to the righteousness part but it's righteousness with these elements. If you ever never noticed that those elements are non-mechanical. That's what we're talking about. He's telling you up front, then he connects it back later when I say you've got to exceed the mechanical righteousness of these Pharisees and scribes. You've got to be poor in spirit. You've got to mourn. You've got to be meek. You've got to hunger and thirst for righteousness. You've got to be compassionate. You have to have a clean heart. You have to be a peacemaker. Wow. Most of you are trying to just figure out how to read a label to figure out if something's kosher. Don't forget this stuff right here. Because you can get the other stuff perfect, you're still not getting in. Because remember, this is all about becoming the type of person he, he wants to live with forever. He says, I didn't come to destroy, but to complete. And the word complete there has the understanding of filling up to fullness to show you what it looks like when it's done fully. If it means to do away with, I, came, I didn't come to destroy, but to destroy is what people are saying, right? To, to do away with. I didn't come to do, destroy it, but I came to do away with it. That doesn't make any sense. But just understand, there's another place in the verses where it says, I came so that your joy might be complete. So stop having joy. He's done away with it. If that's the same absurdity. If you're gonna use the word, use it the same everywhere. If it means to be done away with, then it means to be done away with. So I came so your joy would be done away with. No, he came so your joy would be filled to overflowing to fullness. Well, that makes sense. Well, then apply that back here. Then it makes more sense, doesn't it? <laughs> 